So Regina, thank you so much for having me. Julie, thank you. And thank you to the board for, uh, for allowing me to give this presentation. And a special thank you to the people who've mentored me. Um, uh, Judy Esterquest has actually, uh, in, if, if it looks like I know a bit about the league, it's only because um, uh, Dawn really helped kind of, you know, welcome me, get me introduced. And then uh, Judy Esterquest has spent a lot of time with me uh, to really show me the rope. So thank you so much. Wouldn't be here without uh, the very, very generous um, uh, time and attention uh, from, from uh, other league members. So just briefly, let's talk about rank choice voting and what the benefits of, uh, it's, it's known in the shorthand as RCV. Rank choice voting promotes more civil, less negative campaigns. Um, and that's very simply because a candidate must appeal both to be a person's or a voter's first choice, but they also have to appeal to be a second or even third choice of voters in order to ensure that they get elected. So the other, uh, another benefit, and, and they're really, you know, they're, they're sort of three plus, plus one here. Um, ranked choice voting leads to uh, more diverse representation of elected officials. Um, there is plenty of evidence, both current and historic, um, of seeing more women elected, seeing communities of color be better represented uh, when ranked choice voting is adopted. Um, I'll jump to the, to, to the fourth bullet. It also eliminates, it also eliminates the spoiler, spoiler effect. effect. And that's probably, and that's the, big probably one. the big one. Well, there's someone who needs to there's mute out. To mute yes, out. Something just happened. yes, something just happened. Let me see if I can mute that see individual. Mute that. No, is that not it? Um, let me see. Okay, thank you. Whoever did it, thank you so much. Um, it eliminates the spoiler effect, and we're going to we're going to dig in on that a little bit because that's probably the the focus benefit um, that we want to talk about. Um, and in many jurisdictions, it eliminates the need for runoff elections, and there are significant cost savings um, and benefits to that. And it also improves voter participation because runoff elections are very typically um, uh, poorly poorly uh, attended or have poor turnout. So let's talk about where this is going, though, right away. What are the outcomes that, that, we, that, that we are seeking? Um, and, and I'm actually going to do them in reverse order and kind of show how we get there. So uh, we'd like to see ranked choice voting become an accepted voting system statewide in New York. And to get there, right, we are going to, we need to advocate with our New York state legislators to make ranked choice voting a reality. And in our case, in Port Washington, Manhasset, it, it turns out Gina Salitti um, in the assembly is on the elections committee. So we would want to be advocating with her and others and get co-sponsors. To do that from a league perspective, we would need to have the league in New York state concur with the national position. We'll talk about that later, but the league has a national position on this um, that they promote, that the league promotes alternatives to plurality voting. To do that, we would partner, potentially partner with the league uh, in New York City um, and other local leagues. As you know, obviously ranked choice voting has been adopted at the New York City level. You've probably heard that. Um, and so the league in New York City has been uh, very active and, and they are holding, the New York City League is having a caucus in June um, at the, uh, this, you know, just in a couple of months. And so what I'd like is to find fellow travelers in our local league who would like to work and partner with me on this issue and ideally partner with New York City and other leagues uh, to really make the caucus uh, a, a great one and, and really promote the idea of, of adopting this at the state level so we can in turn lobby our legislators. Now, I'm sure there are, there are varying degrees of understanding uh, in this group. There, it's normal of what ranked choice voting is. So rather than just do a kind of um, uh, an explanation of, of it, I found a two minute video, which is great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna share that video with you. Um, again, two minutes and I think it does a great job. So I'm gonna stop this share and I'm gonna go ahead and share this video. And I think this should play cleanly. So here we go. In most elections, you only vote for one candidate for each office. But in some elections, voters can rank three or more candidates for each office. It's called ranked choice voting. Here's an example of how it works. All of the candidates will be listed on the ballot in three columns. Make your first choice vote in column one by filling in the oval of the candidate you'd most like to win. Vote for your second choice in column two and make your third choice in column three. That's all there is to it. Now let's see how the votes are counted. 
Let's say there are four candidates running for mayor. Asha, Zach, Omar, and Lucy. Once the polls close, we count all the first choice votes first. To be elected mayor, a candidate needs more than half the votes. In this example, Asha has more than half of the votes, so she's declared the winner. However, if no candidate gets more than half the votes, we start eliminating candidates and counting the next choices of those who voted. In this example, Zach is the candidate with the smallest number of first choice votes, so he is cut. We use the second choice votes on Zach's ballots and count those voters' second choices instead. If one of the remaining candidates now has more than half of the total votes, that candidate is declared the winner. If not, the next lowest candidate, Lucy, is eliminated. Her votes are now counted for the next choice on the ballot. Some of Lucy's votes went to Zach, who was already eliminated, so those new votes for Zach instead count for those voters' third choice candidate. We are now down to two candidates, and Omar clearly has more than half of the votes. That makes him the winner. That's how ranked choice voting works. For more information on ranked choice voting, visit our website. All right, help me. Did that did that um, play cleanly for everybody? Yes. Awesome. I, th I, I really like that video. I think you do a great job. So I, I couldn't I couldn't have explained it in two minutes. So Joe, um, I have a question for you. Okay. If you don't mind. So how does this play out? generally say in our elections, which would it be mostly in primaries where there are say three or four candidates? Because generally when we're voting in an actual election, uh, we're voting for either a Democrat or a Republican or an independent, right? So how, how does that work for us, let's say? So, um... I'll tell you what, why don't I, if you, if, 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 Julie, if it's okay, let, let me, let me kind of, I'll go through and explain how it works. It sounds like the question is, um, is it effective in all uh, types of elections? Um, let me, let me um, kind of talk, because there are many benefits to it. Okay. I'm going to focus in on the, on eliminating the spoiler effect, um, which, which applies to, you know, to, I think all the scenarios that you're talking about, and I'm going to give some examples. Does okay. that work? Sure, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, not at all. No, no, I think it's, we should have a discussion. I just I want to also be mindful of time um, as well and making sure that because the the uh, with the 15 minutes, I'm going to take most of it. So just want to be respectful of, of that, that. I'm not the only thing on the agenda. So but I'd love and I'd love to. And by the way, the other thing I'd say is I'm, I'm available to have this discussion ongoing as well, not just within the meeting. So I'd be happy to have that conversation uh, in detail. So let's um let's talk about just briefly who uses ranked choice voting because i want to make it clear this is not a novel thing um right now it's actually adopted in 20 cities across the u.s and in two states at the state level maine and alaska um and it is very well adopted internationally as well australia's been using it for 100 years ireland for 100 years and in the united states we used it pretty uh pretty um regularly during the progressive era uh, it was adopted uh, in the 1920s for the 1940s, and the story of why it was undone is is very interesting as well, a subject for another presentation. Um, so, Julie, kind of to, to get to what you were asking about, like, how does this, what does this really do? Does it apply to one type of our election or another? I'm going to focus in on one of the key benefits and probably the most intuitive benefit of ranked choice voting, which is the spoiler effect, something we've seen a lot in our politics. So. I'm gonna, let's talk about what a spoiler is. I know that, that most of you probably have some idea, but let's say in, 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 in let's, let's use our imaginations. Let's imagine our town in Port Washington and Manhasset, we're going to have an ice cream festival. And in this ice cream festival, we can only choose one flavor and we're gonna vote on that one flavor. Now, if we vote with our current system, which is called the plur plurality system and the votes went like this, right? Which is strawberry gets 40, Rocky Road gets 35, vanilla and chocolate 20 and then five. In the plurality system, which is our current system, strawberry is the winner, period, end of story, right? Now, does this reflect the community sentiment of Port Washington, Manhasset around ice cream? What we see here is that 
since Rocky Road is actually represents both vanilla and chocolate, right? Those flavors, we find that 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 actually Rocky Road the vote might be split between vanilla. Uh, the Rocky Road the, the Rocky Road vote is split between vanilla and chocolate. In other words, it's very likely that vanilla and chocolate spoiled the election for Rocky Road by being in it and split the Rocky Road vote. So if we were to use a ranked choice system and, and, and allow the, the, the votes, just as you saw in the video, for vanilla and chocolate to be eliminated and their second choices to be counted, we would find that the majority really want Rocky Road. So hopefully is that, that's a clear illustration of, of how it eliminates the spoiler effect. Now let's talk about that in real life in our politics. Now I'm plenty old enough to remember and have voted in the election of 1992, where Bill Clinton came to power uh, with 43% of the vote, and, and um, not unlike Strawberry, you know, a strong a strong base of support, but not necessarily everybody's choice. In this case, some argue that, of course, that the, a lot of those votes were taken away from Bush, and and clearly, though, in the plurality system, not a majority of people uh, supported that candidate. And here's kind of the granddaddy spoiler election of them all uh, that we that certainly again in my lifetime that I remember loud and clear. Uh, we know that um, you know that that George Bush came to power by winning Florida with 537 votes, but in that race was Ralph Nader, if you recall. And here's what we found out: exit polls of Nader voters actually showed that by a very very significant margin they preferred um, Gore. So if those Nader voters had been allowed to put down their second choice and then Nader as the last place candidate was eliminated and then the second choice votes were counted, right? You would find there would be a lot of many votes for Gore, some for Bush as second choice. And then some people would have put no choice at all, which is fine, just as long as, they, and what we would have had instead is this, a very clear majority uh, vote and Nader was definitely the spoiler. And this goes on all the time. It goes on, a, here's a, a list. I've got a list of New York spoilers here. I've actually got a much longer list. Um, the way Pataki was elected, Reagan wouldn't have won New York State in 1980. It goes on and on and on. And in fact, one that's not on here and one that's very personal to me is, um, I grew up in upstate New York in, in the Poughkeepsie area. For years, we had a state senator named Steve Saland. Um, Steve Saland uh, was, um, a very moderate Republican. And in fact, I think it was either in 2012 or 2010, Steve Salan voted um, across the aisle as a Republican and voted to support same-sex marriage um, in New York State. And that's how it got through. And the next election, a conservative ran against him, split the, split the Republican vote, and he lost. Under ranked choice, that wouldn't have happened. So here's the main point of this. The existing plurality system is the spoiler. That's what's rotten. Right, it splits up coalitions. Um, it, uh, again, it, it is the spoiler effect. It creates plurality voting, like we saw with strawberry icing, creates the spoiler effect. Effect, and this is where we get into things that are really important to the league that I've learned about. It scares voters away from voting their conscience. It discourages sincere voting. You won't vote for a third party. You, it, it discourages people from running too. And that last point, because, um, like, say a candidate, and Julie, this is to your question about primaries. So let's say the primary uh, covers certain communities of color, let's say. A, a, a second black candidate might not run because they fear that they're gonna split the black vote, for example. This eliminates that, so more people run. Or same thing, if there's a woman in the race and they say, I don't wanna be another woman in the race because that might take away votes from that person, eliminates all of that. So, and this is very consistent with league principles. And let's talk about that. The league, um, took a position in 2020, and thanks to, to Judy Esterquist, I had the distinct privilege of meeting Dr. Barbara Klein, League of Oregon, and Paula Lee, League of California, two people who have been working for over 20 years to get this to become the national position. So I don't, you don't have to read this whole busy page. I highlighted the three things that are consistent with ranked choice voting, and just having had the, the chance to talk to Dr. Klein and, 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 and Paula Lee, um, I, I came to understand they're very keen on alternative voting systems and they are absolutely um, 
uh, okay with, not just okay, encouraging of ranked choice voting as, a, as an alternative system. That's what they mean in implement, where it says they're implement alternatives to plurality voting. And again, minimizing wasted votes, promoting sincere voting. These are national league level principles. So, and, 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 and so the reason it says implement alternatives to plurality voting just briefly is that there are other systems besides ranked choice that people advocate for, which are perfectly valid. Just wanna make that clear. Ranked choice is by far the most popular right now. Now, again, didn't put this up here for you to try to read all the fine print here. This is the current New York state position on, you know, uh, on election law and impact on issues. Missing is anything about alternatives to plurality voting, just FYI. And so that's why now, going back to what we'd like to do or what I hope we can do together, um, which would be to find anybody else within this league who would like to work with me um, on, uh, you know, on this issue so that we can participate in the upcoming caucus, right, where the, the league from New York is already doing work on this. And, and then what we the, the outcome from that would be to get the New York State League to concur with the national position. Once we have that, we can go talk to our legislators and particularly would love to meet with Gina Salitti, who is on the elections committee, because there are bills that have already been introduced by the assembly and the Senate. This is, this is an active issue in the, in the current legislature. There are very specific bills we could advocate for, but we have to get to that New York state position in order to do that. So I'd love to work with you on this. Um, and then we would see, and the bills just allow ranked choice voting as an acceptable voting method. Most localities in New York defer to state law. That's why it's so important to go this route. Um, I would also be glad to lead um, a committee in this chapter, in this league um, on, uh, on elections, an elections committee, um, and do work uh, as in, in that capacity as well. So I, again, being mindful of time, um, I want to uh, thank uh, again, can't, can't thank uh, Julie, Regina, the board um, for having me today. And uh, I'll turn it back. And, and please, I understand there, you know, if we want to talk about it now, great. But please, I put my contact information up. You should have, if you don't have my contact information, Julie or Regina can get it to you. Um, I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this, but I'd really like that. So please follow up with me. And uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. <laughs> We'll be happy to do that, Joe. It was a very informative presentation. Does anyone have any questions before Joe uh, finishes up completely? Julie. I'd like to ask if, and maybe Judy knows this, how can we do in fact right now today, if possible, if we can have a vote, make it so that we can, as a league, go to the convention in June supportive of New York City. Can we just do that with a vote here right now? If we- That's my, so my understanding from talking to, with Joe to the Oregon and California people is that because there's a national position, a local league can concur with it. So I apparently we can concur with the national position, but we can't Lob we can lobby local officials with that concurrence, but we can't lobby state officials. So it's, it, it, it constrains our lobbying. It would not constrain our being at the convention and saying we support it. But what I would also like to suggest that we, that, that we do, that would be great to do, Julie, thank you. It would also be great if we could say, yes, Joe, you can head our committee on this. And yes, Joe, feel free to negotiate with New York City so you can be part of that caucus if they'll have you. And what about concurrence? All right, I would suggest that at our next board meeting, we vote on concurrence since we were just presented this information and um, we, we can do it after the board meeting, have a discussion and then vote on it. And that would be in time for the state convention. And you'd have to publicize any members who want to come to come to that meeting. Give them a time, you know, whatever, and schedule a concurrence vote. 